Welcome back to The Restless Cure. Today is day two of our journey down the Natchez Trace Parkway, and our final destination today will be right outside Tupelo, Mississippi. We spent the morning in Florence, Alabama, visiting the childhood home of Helen Keller, and then touring Fame, where Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, Alison Krauss, and many other artists have recorded albums. Our first stop on the parkway this afternoon is Rock Spring Trail. The trail crosses a creek and is only about a 20-minute walk. The area is a popular spot for beavers and a lot of other wildlife. Tishomingo State Park and one of the cool features about this park is a uh, old suspension bridge and we got on the suspension bridge this is one of the first things I seen is this cable busted right here it's like this thing was built in I think 1939 so we're gonna ease on to the other side State Park was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps in 1934. The suspension bridge and many of the buildings here today were built by the CCC. This park offers seven hiking trails, fishing, canoeing, and rock climbing. There are many geological features and plant life that cannot be found anywhere else in the state. So if you guys have seen our channel at all, you know I'm a sucker for an old cemetery. And in this case, it's a really old cemetery. These are ancient uh, burial mounds from nomadic Indians in the area. We're about 30 miles outside of Tupelo, Mississippi at the uh, far uh, burial mounds. Uh, just kind of crazy to consider. As far as we know, uh, these things hadn't been plundered or dealt with in 2000 years and it holds the remains and the possessions of uh, our ancient ancestors so it's uh just a nice place to end the day and we're gonna head on into tupelo and get some supper and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow
Well, good morning. Day three of our Natchez Trace Parkway road trip. Uh, we stayed at an Airbnb just a couple of miles off the trace, which is nice. They got this cool uh, pond in the back, but there's no fishing or swimming. Something seems strange about that. But today is kind of our kind of a relaxed day. We don't have much on our itinerary. We're going to go into Tupelo, Mississippi, and see the birthplace of Elvis. And uh, I think we're going to stop at the Natchez Trace Parkway Visitor Center. And from there, we're just going to drive the trace and just see how it shakes out. There are over 100 wayside exhibits along the parkway. Today we are going to stop at quite a few, but we won't be able to see all of them. Many of the stops educate visitors about the Chickasaw that lived in this area in the 1700s. Big bad wolf creeping around on trails trying to get some footage. This area is part of the original trace that was still being used during the Civil War. There are 13 unknown Confederate soldiers buried here, and their cause of death is unknown. Marble headstones were erected in 1940, but over time they were stolen and they have been replaced by the National Park Service. Here, archaeologists found evidence of a Chickasaw village. They found the remains of three homes and a fort. The concrete curbs outline the areas where the structures were originally located. There is also a quarter mile interpretive trail where you can learn more about the area's plants and how the Chickasaw used them for food and medicine. These next two stops mark locations of historic significance for the Chickasaw. The Council House was the location of the 1820 Chickasaw capital city of Pontotoc. This is where treaties were signed and tribal laws were established. After the Treaty of 1832, the land was surrendered and the Council House disappeared. The Talkshire stop marks the location of a small settlement of white men in Chickasaw. It also became the second post office between Nashville and Natchez in 1801. The mounds at the Owl Creek site were built between 1100 and 1200 AD. Archaeologic excavation done in the early 1990s found the remains of a ceremonial temple or elite residence. It is thought that the area was either sparsely populated over a long term 
are only visited by inhabitants for important social or ceremonial occasions. Preserved here is a portion of the original Natchez Trace that is over 200 years old. If you'd like to see more of the original trace, you can check out our Rodney, Mississippi video where we hiked a portion of the original trace. This creek was recognized by the Choctaw and Chickasaw as the boundary or line between their territories until 1830 when both tribes moved to Oklahoma. This park is named after the congressman that introduced a bill in 1934 authorizing a survey of the old Natchez Trace. Four years later, the historic road was designated a unit of the National Park System. It's a beautiful park that has an overlook on top of Little Mountain, one of the highest elevations in Mississippi. putting the finishing touches on day three. We made it to French Camp, Mississippi, which is where our, our rustic bed and breakfast is. We didn't get a chance to go to the Elvis Museum today. Uh, the Sunday operating hours just didn't work out with our schedule for today. So we had to skip out on Elvis. Uh, but all in all, the day was pretty leisurely. We just drove south on the trace and I looked at all the uh, scenic areas and overlooks and uh, just kind of took all that in today. But tomorrow's gonna be, be a little bit faster paced. We got about 180 miles left on the trace that we've got to finish tomorrow. So uh, we're not gonna let grass grow under our feet. But I think we'll still have a good time and uh, we'll see what we can get into.